Hello, this is Gene Thorpe, Little Red Rooster TV, and today I'm with Mike St. John, Mar Martin Benatar, the briefcase Blues Brothers Band. How are you guys doing today? Good. We're great. All right. I'll tell you, about three weeks ago, I was out at the uh, Powerhouse Powerhouse Pub in Folsom and saw these guys and their band. It was an incredible show. It was really good. You guys were fabulous. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, now, uh, uh, we're not going to talk to these guys as though they're in character, as uh, Jake and Elwood, but as Martin and Mike. And I've known Mike since, what, about 1982? 82. And I used to have a talent agency here in Sacramento. It was called GTA. And I haven't even said that in so long. It sounds odd. And Martin, you uh, were born in Marysville, I Marysville, understand. California. And then where did you go to school? Went to school at Foothill. High Foot school. Hill High School. And then, what, how did you very first get into the music? Uh, I, my, actually, my high school, first, one of my first junior high school girlfriends was Linda Klein. No kidding. From the Klein music story From the family? Klein family. Wow. And I got to know her brother, Rex, who wow. was a phenomenal drummer at the time. And uh, I fell in love with, with the music. Wow. And so you are a drummer. How I many am. years have you been a drummer? 40. 40 years as a drummer. And so in the band, you're primarily doing Elwood. And I'm just doing Elwood. Thing. But with the Klein family, so tell me a little bit about that. Did you study with them, and why did you choose to study with them? Well, you know, I, 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 uh, spent, some, I spent quite a bit of time at their house as a youngster, and I met Rex, and I met Kent, the whole family, Joe, his father, and his mom. Um, and uh, they were very kind to me, and Rex was just a phenomenal player, and he and I used to set our drums up next to each other in their room and, and play. And are you left-handed? I am left-handed. And what significance was that with the Klein family? Well, Rex was left-handed. And so both of you guys were left-handed. Yes. And, and, and you know who else is left-handed, don't you? Mike? Ringo. Ringo. Oh. Ringo's left-handed. So when you're a left-handed drummer, you, do you start your fills... Uh, with your left hand as opposed to like the way a right-handed drummer would do it? Backwards. So you can probably sound pretty much like Ringo if you wanted to. Right? I could. Very good. Well, we're not going to talk about that because we're going to talk about your Blues Brothers show. So uh, anyway, so I met Mike in 82 and had my talent agency and Mike used to come into the Skips Music where we had one of our offices was in Skips Music. We had another office down on Watt Avenue uh, next to Denny King and Associates and that was a quite a, a, an adventure to have that. Yeah. But you used to come in with your band. How many people were in your band at the time? Uh, seven. Nice. Yeah. And so tell me, how did the, that was called the Briefcase Blues Band as yeah. a, uh, opposed to the Briefcase Blues Brothers. Yeah. So how did you get started with that? What was the very first? The thing? impetus, it started as a Halloween costume. And it literally, you know, guys <laughs> told me from the time that Saturday Night Live came on used to tell me all the time how much I look like Belushi. And I dressed up one year and put this suit on, not this particular suit, but a suit like this, and went down to old Sacramento, and people thought I was him. And I was just like, why would he be in Sacramento? You know what I mean, really. But I kind of got the thing and I thought about it, and then we went out, and my buddy, a good dear friend of mine, Jack Hughes, did Elwood, and we went out and won a lip sync contest from KZAP. Wow. With Kevin Boom Boom Anderson. Wow, Kevin Boom Boom Anderson. And somebody know. came up to me that as an old friend and actually turned out to be our first guitar player and said, Why don't you do it with a band? Wow. And I was like, I thought to myself, I was like, Yeah, that means I'd have to sing. And I was like, I could do that. Because I'd sang in choir and stuff in school, so I wasn't afraid to do that. And, and one thing is just did it. interesting uh, to me about you. Is I ask you know Mike a lot of times what what are the lyrics to this song? I don't think there is a song so far that I've ever asked him that he doesn't know, already know the words to. There's quite a few, and we have always liked, and I think uh, Martin's the same way. R and B. I asked Mike the other day, "What's your very favorite song?" And he said, "Ray Charles." Well, the first, like I said, the first song that ever moved me as a human being was "What I'd Say" by Ray Charles. Nice. And to this day, when I hear that that groove, is just like, oh God, I love. And Martin, what's your very favorite song? One of my very favorites, and I love to play drums on this particular tune, is I Feel Good. 
I feel good. I love, I feel good. See, James Brown is my very favorite guy. But somebody asked the other day uh, on Facebook, they said, what song ever made you cry? And I'll tell you, and I think you guys will agree, when a man loves a woman, Percy Sledge. You, you know? Great tune. So, uh, and that's one of the things that I think about your band. When I think about your band, it, I think of how really authentic they are. And, and I'll give you my feedback on that. I've, I've been in the music business since 1961 and booked the bands, many, many different bands. And the thing going out to the Powerhouse Pub a couple of weeks ago was the band was authentic. I love that drummer. What's your drummer's name? Brian Jenkins. Brian Jenkins. That guy is, he's an animal. He's just very, very, very good. And, and the guitar player, what's his Bob name? Bob Kinney. Bob Kinney. And then his son, Brian? Uh, Ryan, uh, actually, Jason King. Jason. Yeah, and I met him. I, I met him, and he was just such a professional. I call him, I call him uh, Mr. Handsome. Mr. Handsome. He is a beautiful kid. He's man. the baby of the group. Yeah. yeah. How old is he, approximately? Uh, you know, that's a good question. 30 something, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So you're uh, one keyboard player that plays a saxophone. What's his name? Dean Everett. Dean Everett. And then your other guy is a, a Sacramento icon Gordon Groff. Gordon Groff. Mm hmm. Yeah, so what a band. Authentic, and then you guys came onto the stage. The band was playing along. You guys came up onto the stage, and it was electric. It was like uh, lifted the people right off the floor. And then at the end of the set, I was go I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go up and say hi to Martin and uh, Mike. And you couldn't get near you guys because people wanted to get their pictures taken with you. It was amazing, and it still is. And so we're going to be having a car show here Saturday. Uh, and the car show is going to be May the 4th, right here, which is two days from now. I'm, I'm going to get this thing out, and we'll get this thing circulating, this interview. And they're going to be here with your Cadillac. What year is your Cadillac? 1979 Coupe de Ville d'Elegance. Is it the new Bluesmobile? It's the new Bluesmobile. The new Bluesmobile. And cool. you guys are going to be here for pictures, and people can get their pictures taken with Jake and Elwood. Absolutely. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I, I think that is just incredible. I thank you guys so much for doing that. You're going to make our car show have a little cherry on the top. It'll be so, a lot of fun. what would you say if a person was thinking of coming out and hearing you guys? Well, in fact, do me a favor and give me a couple of dates that are coming up. I know you're going to be at Swabies. You're going to be at a couple of other really good venues. So, tell we'll me about be that. At, uh, we'll be up at uh, the Najir Winery uh, for a concert uh, June 29th. Do you have any idea how much that's going to cost the public? I'm not exactly sure, but you can go on our Facebook page. There nice. is a direct link on our Facebook page uh, advertising that, and there's a ticket link. So the Facebook page is the Briefcase Blues Brothers. Review. Yes. Review. Review. Oh, I love that. V-U-E. Yeah, Review E. So you, how many people are in the band with you guys? Seven? Seven. Seven pieces, and you have a horn. You've got two keyboards. Actually, Actually two horns. You have two horns because Gordon can play trumpet. Trump. And... Mm -hmm. The sax and uh, harmonicas, yeah. mm -hmm. and the guitar player is incredible. Well, he did a, a version of uh, Rufus Thomas' uh, "Walking the Dog" Walking that the was dog. different and very, very, very good. And will you do me a favor and tell me that story about when you were in Memphis? And when we went to Memphis, uh, we went to get interviewed by George Klein, who was a friend of Elvis's for years. And we were walking into the radio station, and there was a guy, black guy, there selling T-shirts. And I was like, oh, those are cool. He goes, hey, Blues Brother, why'd you buy a tea? Oh, okay, I'm, well, I'm going to come back out. So we walked inside, and George Klein says, do you know who that was outside? And he, I said, no. And he said, that was Rufus Thomas. And I said, Rufus Thomas? You mean walking the dog, Rufus Thomas? He goes, yeah. I said, hang on. <laughs> and I went back outside, bought three T-shirts from him, and said, dude, what are you doing selling tea? I really got to make money. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> But it was really cool to see Ru the the real Rufus Thomas on the on the you know, and he's a he's a Stax icon. He is Stax, and you know, it seems like the bigger they are, the nicer they are. Pretty much, you know. And I know Rufus always a DJ, always working, you know, running uh, jam sessions and all that kind of stuff. And I've seen him a couple of times with BB King, and a couple of times with you know some of these old timers back there in Memphis. Um, I love going to Memphis and being down on Beale Street. Yeah. In uh, fact, I just uh, did a, a little uh, review of a, of a Memphis uh, ES um, Les Paul guitar with f -holes built on Beale Street and that. You, and you guys, so in your time, I know, Mike, you guys have been in the Legend Show. You were back in Branson, Missouri 
had your own uh, review there and, and show mm -hmm. after the Blues Brothers and before you got into this current uh, incarnation. And uh, so you've had a lot of experiences. Is there any stories that you'd uh, like to bring forth that you thought would be interesting? You met Glenn Campbell. You have actually were kind of a protege of uh, Paul Revere, weren't you? Yes, I worked tell, for tell, Paul. I worked, a little bit about. I worked experience. for Paul Revere for about six years. He was. We were in. We were in Honolulu, Hawaii. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I got to say, Paul Revere from Paul Revere and the Raiders. So we're talking about some things that some of you might not know who Rufus Thomas is, Paul Revere and the Raiders, and that. But when we name these, please do get on and look these bands up because this is some really cool stuff. So they're please. on the Google. Yeah, on to Google. You know, but Paul was, he was a great guy. He's a, he's an, he was an icon of rock and roll. His wife did Marilyn Monroe in our show. So he was one of the investors and ended up being like the manager, the company manager when I was in Hawaii. And it was really cool to work with him. And when I was playing, we would play in Reno and Tahoe. And a lot of times we'd play in the same venue, but he would play in the showroom, we'd play in the lounge. And I'd go up there on my break and I'd just sit there and watch him watch what he did and how he did a show and what and, you know he was he was amazing he was a mastermind he was a he was a he brilliant was, entertainer and in him and dick clark you know i mean they were right in kind of the same wavelength oh they there. were buddies he did paul talked to dick clark every day he used to call him the teenager yeah and so martin do you have any stories from your experience in the music business i have one okay i have one we uh what quite a while back opened up for Mary Wilson and the Supremes. Wow. And at the that particular time, I was doing a little bit of production work and a little bit of courier, and the agency called me and said, hey, um, we would like you to take this envelope and, and, and hand it off to Mary after your show. It's her paycheck. And I went, well, okay, sure, I can, I can do that. You know, So I put the paycheck in my briefcase. We did our show. And after the show, I went, hmm. Maybe I had to go with Elwood Blues. So I walked up to her trailer, knocked on the door, and some guy goes, who is it? I go, it's Elwood. And they went, who? Elwood, what do you want? I need to talk to Mary Wilson. <laughs> and so this guy opens the door and he looks at me and he, go, and he was like in disbelief. What do you want? I said, I got a paycheck. And he goes, you can, I go, no, no, gotta be hand delivered to Mary. <laughs> and I hear him, who is it? She goes, it's Elwood. <laughs> well, let him in. <laughs> so they let me in the trailer. Some <laughs> hunky business. She was sitting at the, at the table, and I walked up, and I go, you married? Yeah. I go, I've got a check for you. <laughs> she was looking at me in disbelief, and I opened the briefcase up, pulled the envelope out, and I handed her the envelope, and I said, you better open it up to make sure that it's right. <laughs> <laughs> she, she opened it up, and he goes, look right <laughs> Thank you, Elwood. <laughs> and I've heard yeah. one and watched oh, that's funny. We did a, we did one in Burbank one time, and we did a tour with Otis Day and the Knights, the guy from the movie Animal House. And he hadn't seen us yet. He knew we were on a gig, but he hadn't seen us. And we come running down the stairs, and did the way Lotus sees us, he loves us. And ran down the stairs, and I jumped on the last the last landing, and he was standing right there. And he about had a heart attack. He's like, Boo! he thought he'd seen a ghost, obviously, but it was so funny. And he was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I thought I'd seen a ghost. <laughs> but, you know, it was, it was fun. It was fun. We had some good times. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I just want to thank you guys. Is, is there anything else you'd like to share before we wind down? I just bit? want people to know that we're not doing this. As it's, it's, it's not, it's not half-baked. It's something that both of us feel real strongly about. We enjoy the music. We enjoy the hipness and the fun of these characters because it, it brings out stuff in both of us that probably wouldn't be there ordinarily if we hadn't, wouldn't put these suits on. And we have, the tribute to the music, the music is solid. Between he and I, I mean, he, he's oh. very, in rehearsals, he's very much on the drummer as far as where things are supposed to be. and. I know just from ear and you know having done them so many times how it's supposed to be, and we're very particular about that. We want it to come off like you went to see the Blues Brothers. Well, one thing about the Blues Brothers is the Blues Brothers was never a real entity. It was never really a band. It was always an imaginary, perfect incarnation of a blues band with a story 
But it was and, a band. But it was a band. No, yeah, I, what I mean, what I mean by that, when it was incarnated, when it was, yeah. it was, you know, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, and they said, "Oh, let's do this." And they have always had authentic and great musicians, some mm -hmm. of the finest musicians in the world. Steve and, Cropper, Doug Dunn, Matt yes. Guitar Murphy, Paul Schaefer was the musical director. Yes. I mean, they, they, and, Tom Bones Malone, Lou Marini. I mean, they had a, a smoking Tom Malone, Lou Marini. And Alan Rubin were the horn section for uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yep. And uh, Tom Scott was part of it, who's a sax player that's played on everybody's record. And yep, LA Express. And the LA Express, all of them. And Steve Cropper and Duck Dunn played on every song that Stax Records made, probably. And that's what, you know, is good about your band, is that your band is authentic. Your, the musicianship of this band is excellent. These guys are committed. It's a real good thing. I just want to talk about one last thing. And so uh, this Saturday, which is March the 4th, is going to be... May the 4th. May the 4th is going to be a car show that uh, we definitely help over 100 charities a year. There should be like 75, 80 cars. It's going to be chilly. There's going to be three bands. There's going to be Flight 19, uh, Highway 27, and the voiceover band. These guys are going to be there uh, get, giving pictures in front of the Blues Mobile. We're going to have a great time. We'd like to invite you to come on out. 801 Sterling Parkway, Lincoln, California, 95648. Look it up. And uh, it won't be hard to find. And uh, Mike St. John, whose birthday it is. Happy birthday, Mike. Happy Thank birthday. You. So, uh, how old are you, do you want to say? Older than dirt. Older than dirt. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we talked about that already. Yeah. Martin Benetard, thank you for coming. Thank Martin. you, Gene. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure. I love you dearly. This is my little brother. And Gene Thorpe, Little Red Rooster TV, signing out.